Hi everyone, welcome to our channel Simplified Computer Science Concepts by Professor Rutuja Kadum. Today, we will be learning one of the physical clock synchronization algorithm in distributed systems, that is Berkeley's algorithm. So let's begin. So Berkeley's algorithm's basics we will first look into. So this Berkeley's algorithm is a physical clock synchronization technique which is used in distributed systems. Now there is one assumption related to this Berkeley's algorithms and that assumption says that each machine node in the network does not have an accurate time source. Why it is said so? Because in distributed systems there are multiple nodes in communication with each other and these nodes are uh, distributed in different geographical locations. Each geographical location will have different times. So these uh, time will have uh, will be reflecting on the computers. That is why it is said that each machine node in the dozen, in the network does not have an accurate time source. Now we will first look into the example of the Berkeley's algorithm and then I will go to the algorithm so that it makes it more easier to understand. If we see the illustration first. Now here uh, there is one master node or it is also called as a time daemon. Now this time daemon uh, as well as there as uh, slave nodes. So we have two things one master node and multiple slave nodes. Now this master node is also called as a time daemon and there are slave nodes. Now they are connected in a network. This master daemon or we say it is a time daemon. Uh, it has a time set to it as 3 o'clock in, uh, in its clock. And uh, uh, each slave has uh, their own times. So slave node 1 has 310 in its clock. 2 has 320 in its clock. And slave node 3 has 250 in its clock. Now if there are different different times uh, on different different nodes. If we want to communicate. How they will communicate because there is no synchronization. So for communication there is one basic need that all the nodes should be synchronized among themselves. So for synchronization uh, what is done in Berkeley's algorithm let's see that. So the first uh, step or in the first pass what happens is that this time daemon or the master node it requests the time stands from all the slave nodes that are connected in the network. So this is the time daemon that is the master node and these are the slave nodes. So what does this time daemon uh, tells that uh, I have 3 o'clock in my time. Uh, your times are 310, 320 and 250. Now it says that my time is 3 o'clock. What is your time? So it requests the timestamps from the slave nodes that are connected in the network <clears throat> and also it asks for timestamp from its own from uh, uh, from itself as well in pass 2 what happens is that this slave nodes responds their timestamps to the master node now what happens is that these slave nodes that is must uh, slave nodes uh, will respond with their timestamps to the uh, master node so they say that my time is 310. That means I am ahead of you uh, by 10 minutes. Then slave node says that I am ahead of you by 20 mi minutes because I have 320 in my clock. And slave node 3 says that I am behind you by 10 minutes because my time, uh, the time in my clock is 250. So what happens next is that the master node also sees, uh, uh, sends itself the time saying that I have 3 o'clock and there is no need of adjustment. That is zero adjustment because I have 3 o'clock itself in my clock. Now what happens next in uh, step number 3 that master node computes fault tolerant average. Now what happens in fault tolerant average is that the time uh, which is the uh, slave node's timings which is ahead or behind. Uh, behind that time is computed that means this plus 10 plus 20 minus 10 and 0 so these are uh, in minutes we will consider these in minutes so uh, slave node 1 says that i am 10 minutes ahead 2 says that i am 20 minutes ahead and 3 says that i am 10 minutes behind and the master itself is 0 that means it is uh, on the track now how will we will com compute this uh, fault tolerant average is that we will uh, 
add up this and divide by 4. Why 4? Because there are 4 nodes in the network. So, plus 10, plus 20, minus 10 and this 0. That means 20 divided by 4 because the number of nodes are 4. So, 20 divided by 4 is 5. That means the, uh, 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 that means 5 minutes we need to uh, adjust. Now, in the pass 4, what, ha what happens is that we have earlier calculated that fault tolerant average time. Now, what happens is this, uh, that this 5 minutes will be added or this uh, average time difference is added to the current time of the master system clock. That means earlier the master was 3. Now, this 5 that we had computed that will get added up into the master's time clock and it will be broadcasted to all other slaves in the network. That means it will say that my time is 305. Adjust your time according to me. That is you adjust your time as 35. Now for adjustment what happens is that this slave node 1 which was earlier uh, 310 it reduces itself by 5 minutes and uh, adjusts, adjusts itself to 35. It, uh, this was uh, 320 it reduces 15 minutes and adjusts it to 35 and the slave node 3 which was earlier 250 it increases its timestamp of 15 minutes and makes it 305. So now uh, if you are able to observe all the nodes that is the master node as well as the slave nodes are synchronized at the same timing clock that is 305. Right? That means now if they want to communicate with each other, they can communicate with each other in synchronous manner. And this is how the synchronization is achieved with the help of Berkeley's algorithm. I hope you might have understood this concept. Now, uh, uh, now as you have understood the concept, let us go to the algorithm. Yeah, the algorithm says that an individual node is chosen as the master node from a pool nodes in the network. Uh, this node is the main node in the network which acts as a master and rest of the nodes acts as a slave. Okay, this is the first step. We first select master node and uh, this will communicate in turn with the slave nodes. Now this master node if fails, uh, then any slave in the network can take over. So the system will not come at fault. If the master node fails, any slave can become a master. Then master node periodically pings the slave nodes and asks for the time in their clock. So master node will ask for the uh, their timestamps uh, uh, in the slave nodes and after <clears throat> the slave nodes send the responses, master node calculates the average time between the clock times received and the clock time given by the master. And this average time difference is added to the current time at master system clock and uh, and, uh, and it is um, broadcasted over the network. This is how the synchronization is achieved with the help of Berkeley's algorithm. Now there is one more concept that I would like to tell you is that just observe this particular example. Now here if you see this is the master node these are the slave nodes. Now this slave node is 325 the second one is 250 and the last one is 910. So here this algorithm has the provision for ignoring the readings from the clocks whose skew is too large. Skew means C. If you are able to see, this difference is too large, too wide. It is say it is like greater than uh, 6 hours. So, this particular uh, ex such type of uh, when situations occur, this algorithm will straight away uh, ignore these types of instances and it will only include these two nodes as slave nodes and compute the fault average time and uh, adjust the uh, clock accordingly. So if you see this is uh, this is totally ignored. So these two slaves uh, send their timings to the master node that is 325, 250 even though this 19 is uh, sending its response to the mas master it is ignored. So how it happens is that minus 20 is uh, the difference and uh, uh, between these two and uh, plus 15 we have to adjust for this particular slave node and uh, for this particular slave node minus 6 hours and 
uh, five minutes we have to adjust and for the slave itself uh, for the master itself we have to adjust by 15 minutes so this is how the uh, adjustments are done when the clocks whose key is too large Uh, thank you for watching this video. Um, please like, share and subscribe to the channel Simplified Computer Science Concepts by Pro Professor Rutuja. And I hope you have understood the concept. If you have any queries, please mention them in the comment box. If you like my video, please like, share and subscribe the channel. Thank you.